Hello and welcome. Kyle here. I am still very new here to YouTube. I've had the channel now for, I don't know, about four weeks, about a month or so, I think, and it has been going well. And I'm doing my very first fans interactive session where people can uh, click on the link and obviously um, join and we uh, can have some questions and have a bit of a chat about the current state of affairs of cricket or cricket back in my era, which feels like a very, very long time ago. So that's enough of me. So why don't we kick into it and we'll see what everyone has got to ask me. So uh, why don't we kick on to the, our first visitor and you're the very first visitor on my YouTube channel. So I'm looking forward to having you on board. And it looks like we have Tavesh. How are you, Tavesh? Fine, sir. Absolutely fine. How are you, sir? Good, good, man. Good, man. Where whereabouts are you from? Uh, sir, I'm from India, Jaipur. I'm a oh. host of the show, Hashtag Ask the Wish. Oh, excellent. Great spot, Jaipur. Uh, as a podcaster, I'm uh, doing as a podcaster, sir. Okay, okay. Tavish Sharma, host of the show. Cool. I am Tavish Sharma, host of the show, Hashtag Ask the Wish. A cricket-related show. Okay, my man. Have you got any questions for me for cricket? Yeah. Um... How the uh, bad uh, Brandon McCullum and Kane Williamson have changed the mindset of New Zealand cricket, sir? Well, I think with the New Zealand cricket team, we've always been a team. We've never really relied on the, the individuals to win us a game. And, and certainly with Brendan McCullum, we encompass playing like a New Zealander where we have no fear and we play as a team as much as we can. I think that culture changed when Brendan McCullum was captain around that 2015 World Cup where we really tried to play aggressive cricket without sledging or, or anything like that and just play with freedom with the bat and with the ball. And since Kane Williamson has taken over the reins, he's kind of continued that culture within the group. And uh, I think you'll see from the results of the New Zealand cricket team, they're very good at playing at the team. And the thing with Kane now, we've got some world-class players in that New Zealand side, and Kane Williamson leads from the front. And so my second question is that, uh, uh, what is your thought to uh, play in the Pakistan? That uh, since the Pakistan has started the uh, world cricket team, so that South Africa has uh, recently to the South, uh, Pakistan. So what about the New Zealand cricket uh, to use the Pakistan cricket? Back uh, well, in Karachi or uh, Lahore? Yeah, look, we've recently seen Pakistan here in New Zealand not so long ago, and uh, it can be a very good side, but you're a young side, and I think some of those players need uh, some experience. I think with the, the Pakistan now playing at home more often, I think that's really going to help Pakistan cricket. So it's great that South Africa are now in Pakistan and then playing the, the, this test series at the moment. We're at the state of play. Pakistan have a very good opportunity to beat South Africa here so far in this test match. So more often Pakistan play at home. I think it's really going to help those younger players um, as this Pakistan kind of build this new team and, and new culture. So thanks, Tavish, for joining in. I hope to see you next time when we do another interactive so, session. Uh, one... Hello, Durant. sir. Hello, buddy. Hi, Where are sir. you from? I'm from Ahmedabad, sir. Uh, Ahmedabad, oh. Gujarat, uh, India. Cool, cool. So, What's your question? Yes. Mate? Uh, sir, uh, it's an honor to be with you, sir, over here. My question would be, sir, that uh, uh, you are recently seeing the downfall of the other nations, uh, except from New Zealand and India. You can see the downfall from Sri Lanka, Australia, Pakistan, and many other countries. So what is the reason that the India and uh, New Zealand are the best uh, at their top uh, at the at all the levels and uh, one more question sir would be added from the IPL as you are a co bowling coach of KKR so will you, will you this time go for the Mitchell Stark if he is opted for it well I'll ask you answer your first question there Karan but um, yes. India yes. have this luxury of the IPL and yes. the depth comes through in this Indian team at the moment it's is amazing. The, the young players are exposed to international cricketers uh, in the IPL when they play against um, the other teams and also within their own team. So look at a guy like Shubman Gill. He's training yes. with a Pat Cummins, with a Sonny Narine. I see that when I'm over there working with KKR. 
And then when he's playing for KKR, he's playing against uh, the David Warners or, or maybe a Mitchell Stark coming up. These uh, Josh Hazelwood, these international players. So yes. he's exposed to it very early on. So when he does get his opportunity to play for India, he has he has that experience behind him. Whereas you look at a young guy, say from New Zealand, he doesn't play international cricketers until he actually plays international cricket. So that's a big, big advantage for India. And I think yes. they were decimated with injuries over in Australia, but these young players just came in and did the job, did the job for them. So that's a big advantage why India are so good. Why New Zealand are so good, I think. New Zealand's never had more depth in the game of cricket in the whole generation of the game. Uh, the depth in the bowling department and the batting department is huge. There's now competition for spots and they all understand each other's roles now and they're very mm-hmm. well led with Kane Williamson. So I think that helps. And plus when you win, you have confidence, right? So they're, they're playing winning cricket. They're a very good team. They have world-class bowlers and batters and that, you know, bodes well for their success. But to your second question, uh, Karen, with... Uh, Sir, just add one more name, Kyle Jamison in that. Mitchell Stark and Kyle Jamison. <laughs> Kyle Jamison, I think in this mini auction coming up, he is going to go for yes. a big dollar. He has to. He has hit international cricket like a freight train over the last only 12 months. Uh, yes. He bowls good pace. He's got good height. Uh, he's taking wickets regularly in international test cricket. And he can bat as well. So, very tall guy. And I think he'll be uh, sought after by most teams in this upcoming auction. So, thanks, Karan, for joining in. Hi, guys. Hello. What's up? How are you? Can you hear me? I can hear you, mate. Talk nice and clear for me. Okay. Hey, Kai, I want to <laughs> ask you a tough question. Uh, what's your prediction on England versus India Test Message Series? That is a tough question. Uh, mm-hmm. I think India win because uh, England have just beaten Sri Lanka in Sri Lanka. But I think Sri Lankan cricket side are very weak at the moment. So I, I, you can't really read too much into that. I've always found when a team tours Australia, whether they win or lose their next series, they perform really well because playing in Australia is a really tough environment to play. While India have gone there, they've been hurt big time with injuries. Young players have stood up uh, very successful against a very good Australian side. Uh, So now their next series is against England at home. India at home is a very, very tough team to beat. Yes, England have got some very, very good players, um, but I think this Indian team are going to have a lot of confidence from this Australian performance, and they're going to be pretty tough to beat. But one of the standout series I'm really looking forward to watch, to be honest, it's going to be a fantastic few weeks over in India. Okay. Okay. Thanks for joining in, mate. Hello, buddy. How are you? Hello, Kyle. I'm good. Love your show. I'm from Kolkata. Uh, uh, okay. uh, Kyle, Kyle, we have seen uh, so many youngsters currently performing exceptionally uh, exceptional well in last year or so. Which youngster excites you the most for the future? I just, I just mentioned them just before. Well, there's two youngsters in world cricket that, oh, sorry, three that really excite me. Old Jamison from New Zealand. He has hit the international stage. He's done nothing wrong. He's going to go for big money in the upcoming auction. I feel he's going to be a superstar of the future. Uh, Shubman Gill, I'm a biggest fan. Uh, to play like he did in Australia, uh, ease, he looked comfortable. He is a player who like all runs freely, and that's what a young cricketer does now. They're very aggressive and they're confident. And he has the game to have a very long, long international uh, career. And there's a player that really intrigues me most, and he's from Australia. And I haven't seen enough of him, but uh, Will Pukowski, there's he's been around for about eight months now, but he's had concussion issues. Uh, but he's a player who's generated a lot of media um, spotlight, I guess. I want to see him play more. What I have seen of him is very exciting. Uh, so he's a player that really excites me as well. 
And I've really, there is a younger generation coming through now. I think we've had the Steve Smiths, the Kane Williams, the Eric Coley's, the Joe Roots. We've seen a, a, a next come through. And I think you can add in Zach Crawley from England as well. So this is this next wave of players who are coming through on the international stage. But that's a very good point. And thanks for uh, joining the show. Uh, hello, Kyle, sir. Hello, how are you? Uh, I'm fine. Uh, I'm a huge fan of yours uh, from India. So I had a question uh, related to Kuldeep Yadav. How difficult uh, was it for KKR to keep Kuldeep Yadav out of the playing eleven after the initial matches? Because I think so his confidence has really gone down uh, in the last one year. Like he was a permanent in the Indian team, in the ODI team. Uh, he was uh, doing really great, great performances. Uh, every batsman. Uh, had become a bunny of his and two years uh, he had a great time. So how do you uh, think that uh, uh, excluding Kuldeep Yadav from playing level, how, how difficult was it for KK? Uh, very difficult because Kuldeep's a wonderful player. He's a great man. He trains exceptionally hard and works hard on his game. Uh, he's still considered an international cricketer, having toured Australia uh, with the Indian side. Uh, so he's right up there in all our opinions I think what happened over in um, the recent IPL in the UAE um, the, the conditions is very they're not the same as India the conditions in India are a lot different to what they are in the UAE so if the tournament that we just had a few months back was held in India you would have seen a lot more of Kuldeep Yadav he still played uh, four or five games over there but Varun um, came into the side and he did exceptionally well. Uh, he was hard to score off. He took wickets. And just the balance of the team in those conditions, we couldn't really fit both of them in. Plus you add in Sonny Narine, He's got three wonderful spinners. So we we're very fortunate enough to have um, so many spinners. But the true character of Kildeep is that he gives to the team. He never said a bad word and it would have been disappointing for him not to play. But the character of the man is that he still gave to the team. And I think he still gave a big future for KKR in the near future. Good question. Thanks, though, buddy. Yes, uh, I had just uh, one point that uh, will you be going uh, for Glenn Maxwell in this auction? And uh, <laughs> I had a, I had actually uh, a request that uh, I have also a channel related to uh, cricket. Uh, it's Crick Fan Corner. So I would just, uh, uh, it will be great if you uh, can join me uh, someday uh, on our channel. And your channel? Yes, uh, Craig Fancon. Oh, okay, cool, cool. I'll keep that in mind. Thanks, man. Thank you. Hamza. Yo, how are you doing? Good, good, man. How are you going? Where are you from? Are you... I'm from Pakistan, bro. Oh, cool, man. Yes, I have two, three questions, I guess. One question is that you have gained, you have taken the retirement way before, like, Six to seven years back, I don't remember exactly. But my question is, how do you manage to keep it uh, from like last five to six years? Uh, I don't think I'm that fit like I used to be. <laughs> it's, one th uh, it's one thing I struggled with, actually, because when I, you're right, I retired in 2015 and I was very fit when I retired and I don't train like I used to. But I still do a bit. I try to do something uh, every couple of days, um, getting out there, being active. Uh, we're lucky here in New Zealand. Um, it's been our summer at the moment, so we've been very active. And, uh, it's important for everyone to stay active. Okay, like you, you could see the New Zealand is a very tough team when it comes to the home side, okay? So what makes the New Zealand team very tough? When he when it plays uh, in their home side, when they when play when they play at their home, yeah. Look, I think every team is tough to beat at home, and that's why I think this England in um, like for example, South Africa, Pakistan at the moment. Um, Pakistan uh, had a tough tour here over New Zealand, but back in their home conditions of Pakistan, I feel like they're in a very strong position at the moment to win this test against South Africa. It's the same team, pretty much the same players. Um, so I think every team is tough to play at home. Here in New Zealand, it's hard for Asian teams, Pakistan, Bangladesh, India, Sri Lanka, to come to New Zealand because the wickets are a lot bouncier. They're, they're a bit faster than they are. So it's always difficult for the subcontinent teams 
to perform here. And plus, the New Zealand side at the moment is very good. They've got world-class bowlers and uh, Bolt, Southie, Cole Jamison's come on the scene. Lockie Ferguson, he's playing, he's tough. Kane Williamson and Tom Latham are very, very good batters. And Ross Taylor. So everyone's come together at the right time for New Zealand and they're turned into a very good team. Like you could see the team Southie is, I think, about to retire because he's he's in that of age. Like he he could be retired at any time. So what is that baller, like younger baller in New Zealand that makes you think like he can be that uh, that type of a baller that can lead the New Zealand baller, baller uh, that can be the head of the New Zealand baller side? Younger, youngster. Yeah. yeah, I think your question is, so Tim Southey has been in the team for a very long time now, maybe 11 years. Uh, so he's got that experience factor. He comfortable playing international cricket. It's not just his job to lead that group on the field, but he needs to bring those young players through. So we've got a Kyle Jamison coming into the scene. There's Matt Henry, uh, Adam Milne, Lockie Ferguson. There's lots of young guys through. I'm getting you. Like, what happened to the Adam Milne? Because he has a very good uh, arm action, very good speed. What happened to him? Like, he came and he just went away. Like, I I could see in Big Bash... He was be like he's not doing good at that in the BBL as well. Yeah, he had a good game last game. I think uh, four overs, one for six. He's back. Adam Milne's picked up a lot of injuries in over the last four or five years. A lot of injuries, so he's been in and out of the team a little bit. But he's a very good bowler, and I think we'll see him back in that New Zealand side soon. But with the injuries, Lockie Ferguson came into the group. Uh, he's also a fast bowler. Um, so there's lots of competition now on the New Zealand side, but I really hope Adam Milne comes back into the group at some stage. So thanks, Hamza. Hello, how are you? Flick your mic, yeah. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Hello? I can hear you. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to ask you how uh, your friendship with Ramiz uh, Please tell me about about friendship you are with Ramis because I got a link from Ramis speak and uh, and join your uh, this session. So Ramis Raja is a very good friend of mine. Uh, I did some work with him about eighteen months ago as a commentator over in Sri Lanka when New Zealand played Sri Lanka, and I got to meet Ramis Raja, and we've stayed in touch since. He's a very good friend, and uh, I'm glad you. Subscribe to my channel as well. And uh, if you came through Ramesh Rajah's channel, then even better. Yeah, he, 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 uh, he, uh, I got a link from the Ramesh speak, the Ramesh Raja channel. And yeah. he also tells a welcome, he welcomed you when you uh, open a channel on YouTube. Okay. Oh. A second question is mine uh, Which batsman of Pakistan that you uh, sorry, uh, I'm not a. My English is 20% correct. Uh, uh, okay. which, which, which batsman of Pakistan by which you scared, scared to ball them that he can hit me a lot? When I was playing? Yeah, when you are playing. Ah, uh, okay. That's a long time ago. I yeah. used to. Uh, I used to. Well, I, I Who's a, who's a really good Pakistani batsman when I was playing. And I always felt uh, Yunus Khan, if he got in, could do a lot of damage. Yunus yeah. Khan. If he, if you... as, as a power eater, as a power eater, I'm asking as a power eater, uh, as like Shai the Freedy, Abdul Razak, have, have you scared uh, when to bowl the, these guys? Both of them are pretty tough to bowl to. And in uh, fact, at had a very good series here in New Zealand in the early 2000s. He was uh, batting around six or seven, and he made life tough for us. A very good all-rounder, and he could hit the ball a long way. So he was always tough to bowl to. And Shadow Freddy, you just don't know what you're going to get from that guy. He, he could go out for a duck, or he could whack 30 in the back. <laughs> we, we always say boom, boom. Yeah, boom, boom. Yeah, boom, boom, very <laughs> tough to bowl, bowl to. But yeah, thanks for joining in, Abu. Hey, sir, Kiora. Right. Oh, Kiora. Nice. I like that. I'm from uh, Auckland, sir. You're from Auckland? Yeah. 
Really what pass? Oh, uh, Mangy. Oh, cool, man. Th- thanks for joining in. Been hot today, eh? Yeah, pretty hot. Yeah. I didn't wear no. Oh, cool. Yeah. The, recently, uh, post COVID nineteen, uh, it's like uh, cricket started with the Test cricket and uh, bang on. Uh, New Zealand uh, whitewashed India for, uh, and uh, uh, in New Zealand whitewashed Pakistan. Yeah, India won against Australia. It's like a Really good advertisement for Test cricket, I think. Uh, what do you say, sir? What do you say? Uh, uh, test, test cricket's my, my favourite format. I, I've always loved Test cricket. And in the last couple of years, there's been suggestions they need to, instead of five day tests, we need to cut it down to four day tests. And I am completely against that, uh, 100%. Um, we've seen a few test matches this year which have gone right down to, to the wire. Um, the New Zealand test match against Pakistan, I think it was the first test match, went down to the last three overs of the match. And that's what it's all about, test cricket. Then obviously we, we're we here, we're lucky in New Zealand, aren't we? We can watch the Australian summer as well. And the Indian series was awesome. It was just a great series to watch. Tough cricket going deep into day five. And I just love watching cricketers blossom in the test game. I really do. It's a real tough challenge, Test cricket, and I just have it on all day. And that's the that's the type of cricket I engage in. Anyone could match, uh, uh, means as your perspective, anyone could match the likes of oh, Lara, Lara and Sachin were my favorite players, and anyone could match in current generation up to them. Like uh, that's a tough question. Because I think Lara and Tendulkar were unbelievable. Uh, they really were. And uh, the bowling back then was pretty tough for those guys as well. There's some super fast bowlers back then. Um, but at the moment, the standout players, I think, has to be Kane Williamson on, on current form. He is just super. Um, Virat Kohli, uh, you know, probably not producing the runs he should at the moment. But we all know he can flick a switch and he's a world-class player. And this Manus Labuschagne really intrigues me in test cricket because he's sort of come from nowhere a little bit in the last uh, 18 months. And, but he, his consistency is really, really good. And obviously, obviously Steve Smith. So I think Kane Williamson, Virat Kohli and Steve Smith are the only ones close to getting uh, to Session and, uh, and Brian Lara. Hi, hey, Kyle. Man, how are you? I'm doing fine. Hi, how about you? Yep. Good, so, good. Um, <laughs> so we have me and my friends. We run up a podcast by the name of Pie Checkers Podcast, uh, and we just interviewed your friend uh, Simon Dool uh, uh, a few weeks back. It would be great if we can have you over uh, as well sometime. Uh-huh. All right. Well, email the guys on my YouTube channel, and we'll uh, we'll teach. Can you have a question? And one question, yeah. Uh, my question is: you uh, you just mentioned that uh, Kane Williamson is one of the best batsmen right now, but is he the best New Zealand batsman of all time? Tough question because better than Martin uh, Crow. Martin Crow was an amazing player. He really was, and uh, I think Martin Crow is more stylish than Kane Williamson. And let's not forget, K- uh, Martin Crow had to basically do it all by himself. He didn't get much support from the rest of the top order. Kane Williamson yeah. gets a lot of support now because the, the batting group in New Zealand's really good. So if you put Martin Crow in the batting group now, I think his record would be even better. I think the wickets are better now for batting compared to Martin Crow's era. In New Zealand, the wickets back then were quite green. They moved quite a lot and they're quite low and slow, whereas now... The wickets here in New Zealand are, are very conducive to scoring runs. So it's really tough to compare era to era. You look at some of the past eras of the fast bowlers through the 80s, etc. Um, but two very fine batters indeed. So thank the good question. Thanks for joining. Hello, yes. Yes, you're yes. on. Uh, hello. Hello. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mike. Good afternoon. Uh, I am from uh, Ravindra Jadeja city. Uh, this city has produced so many cricketers, uh, Abhinu Mankad and so on, Durani and uh, every, everybody. Uh, my okay. question is, 
um, my question is uh, how do you see the chances of england in india especially when they are playing in india and not in england and particularly the role of the uh, the spinners which uh, they have in the side uh, do you think that they, they will be able to perform as good as the ashwin and other spinners uh, I, i thought ashwin yeah, ashwin didn't play the last test but he had an excellent series over in australia and i think that's going to be the difference in these two teams is the the spin element how are england going to cope with the spin of india Uh, yes, England have been in Sri Lanka. They've won pretty easily over there, but the Sri Lankan side is pretty poor at the moment. You can't even compare that team with what they're about to face in, in India. Uh, India is always a tough team to beat at home. I think Virat's going to come back, and he's going to be very determined to score runs. Um, I don't mm. think we've seen the Virat over the last 12 months, and I think he's going to be exceptionally motivated to have a, a really good series against England. Uh, a very good side as well. They're good fast bowlers. Their spinners don't compare with Indian spinners, uh, but they've got some good batters. Joe Root's in good form. Ben Stokes is world class. So it's going to be a tough series for England. Hello, sir. One, one small question. Uh, we have seen Martin, Martin Crowe, Jeff Crowe playing together. But uh, uh, Ken Rutherford was also equally a good player. What do you think about that? Ken Rutherford? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Ken Rutherford. Yeah, yeah. No, he, he was, was a, a very good yeah. He was a question. Uh, he was a captain of New Zealand side once upon a time, but uh, he was superb while uh, driving through the offside. Yeah, absolutely. He was a, a wonderful player. Quite a tough, cricket, tough introduction to international cricket. I think he made his test debut over in the West Indies when he was 18. They were an amazing fast bowling group. So he had a tough Rutherford, but you're, you're bang on. He was a, a wonderful player, and, and Martin Crowe uh, was amazing. So, amazing. So, thanks for joining in. Uh, hi, Kyle. Uh, first of all, congrats for starting your YouTube channel. And um, secondly, thanks for this interactive uh, session. I think it's uh, really nice to have fans in your uh, YouTube channel. Cool. No, uh, my question is, my question is related to fast bowling. As you are right now coaching, um, so we have seen in the recent years uh, many bowlers have come to the Pakistan uh, side. When they play for a year or so, uh, their pace uh, certainly drops. And uh, like you can see, Abbas he was bowling 130s and now he's in 120s. Uh, so one question is that, and secondly, do you think that too much uh, T20 cricket? Uh, you're not. We are not producing uh, test bowlers or genuine test bowlers with good pace, and they can bowl uh, long spells. Yeah, you know, your your last points bang on. The long spell in T20 cricket, you just don't get to do that, do you? So you need to be playing a lot of four day cricket. And from what I know, I don't know for Pakistan, but I know here in New Zealand, there's a big fitness program. Like they make the bowlers super fit, not just strength-wise, but aerobic-wise, so they can bowl long spells. Um, and you make a good point about Pakistan, because another guy, Nassim Shah, come onto the scene and bowled super fast. And I'm actually glad he's not playing this series against South Africa, because he's, in my mind, he, he's just not ready for international cricket. They picked him on talent, and Pakistan have a history over the last few decades, picking young guys, and it's, it's worked well. But with Nassim Shah, I think he needs to go back and play first-class cricket, build his strength up, and learn his game. He's not ready for international cricket at the moment for, my, for me, and I'm glad he's not playing against the South African team at the moment. But the, uh, they haven't played any uh, first-class cricket, like the Seam Shah, Hasnan, he has played one uh, first-class match. Aras Rauf has played three first-class match. He has picked uh, five wickets, and he is right now in the squad. So do you think that lack of first-class cricket, why they are picking them? Yeah, of course. I think that's a big issue. But I think most of the countries around the world have that issue as well. But just getting back to my original point, I, I speak for here in New Zealand. They really focus on their fitness. If they're not getting the, the first-class cricket in, they make sure they're super fit, uh, running fit, Uh, bowling fit and strength and strength fit. So 
they really focused on that here in New Zealand over the last 10 years. So when they do get the opportunity to play test cricket, they're ready for it. Even though they don't have played a lot of first-class games, they're still fitness-wise, they're ready. And so a young guy who's been picked in the Pakistan squad, he's not playing this test match, but Harris Ralph. Now, he, he can be fast. He can be super fast. But he hasn't played a lot of first-class cricket. So it would be interesting yeah. to see if he was to play a test match, how his speed will drop off on days four and day five. But they're really good questions, mate. And thank you for joining in. And thank you for subscribing. Suraj. Hello, sir. How are you? Good, good, man. How are you? I'm good. Uh, thank, uh, thanks for giving us, the, uh, giving us the privilege to talk to you. And right. uh, uh, I have a question uh, regarding, sir, in your uh, bowling history, whatever uh, time you had, and right now you are observing the things. What do you think the bowling uh, is bowling like uh, bowlers uh, and the batsmen comparison to the pre-2010 era and to the after-2010 era? Is the bowling standard gone down or the batting standard gone up? I think batters are more courageous. Batters have more confidence. I think okay. bat Yeah, I do. I think batters like to... Um, they don't fear getting out. I find in my era when I played, there was almost a fear to get out uh, a little bit. But whereas now the batters through T20 cricket, and there's so much of T20 cricket, if they do fail, they'll just play the next game anyway. So... They've lost that fear of getting out. And by losing that, they're more confident to score runs. So I definitely think the mindset of a batter has, has changed big time. I, I really do. And it's made life tough for the bowlers because the batters... Do you are, think that these current ICC rules are not favouring that much bowlers? And bowlers, like in the world, I had seen that pre-2010 era, even Zimbabwe had so much nice, so nice bowlers. Everywhere there, there was so much good first baller. But these days, I can see there is a lack of. I mean, there are hardly four or five six ballers who are bowling above four one forty five or one fifty speed. And yeah. I yeah. back to when I played, you had Shane Bond, Shah Bakhtar, um, Darren Tuffy. Yeah, they all bowled super fast, right? As I don't think we quite mm. see fast bowlers like we used to. But I think the yeah. The cricket surfaces, the pitches are a lot better now as well. They're all set up for batting, and the boundaries are not as big as they used to be. So the wickets are better, the boundaries are not as big, and the batter's mindset is more aggressive, and the bats are a lot bigger. So all these things have played the part where I think you're right in your original point. The game is slanted towards batters than the bowlers. But no, no, really good questions. Now we'll move on Thank to the next and um, thanks for joining in. And you can be our, my last my last man, eh? You can be the last one firing questions. To me. Yeah. Hello, Kyle. How are you? Hello, mate. Thanks for joining in and, and thanks for uh, subscribing. Uh, thank you so much. No problem. Uh, I wanted to ask that uh, how, how do you think New Zealand cricket has evolved uh, in the last decade? We, we saw uh, in India uh, losing to New Zealand badly. We saw Pakistan not playing so well. New Zealand's cricket as a team uh, they, they did have very uh, good match winners in the past, but now they've gelled in as a team really well. They complement Kane Williamson and Ross Taylor well. What do you think that happened? What's the key ingredient for a team to evolve? Like Indian team has recently as well. They beat Australia in, in Australia. So what you know tips will you give for, to the Pakistani team or to the Sri Lankan team who's struggling even to play a, a good cricket in at uh, in, in away series? Yeah, okay. I'll sort of answer all those questions in one. You look at that New Zealand, yeah. they've been really consistent with team selection. So a lot of those players now play a lot of games. <coughs> Tom Latham, <coughs> Kane Williamson, Ross Taylor, Trent Bolt, Aldi. They've played a lot of cricket together. And that's one thing with Sri Lanka. Quite often changing their teams and their squads a lot. A lot of players are moving in and out. So New Zealand have a good understanding of combinations, which, which they've also got world-class players. I think Kane Williamson would, would walk into any team around the world. Tom Latham would. Uh, Trent Bolt would. Um, so they've got world-class players who are experienced at playing international 
cricket all playing at the same time. And I think that helps with the teams and their performance at the moment. But with the other teams, you think they, they change their teams a lot. If you look at Sri Lanka 10 years ago, wonderful players. Uh, Jay Wardner, Singakara, Malina, Jaminda Vass, uh, consistently picking these team players all the time. And that's why I'm back then. And do you think that um, Babar Azam, he has that uh, uh, grit in him, that determination to be at par with Williamson and Kohli, like five years or six years from now? And there is the age gap, obviously, with Kohli. So uh, that's why I'm asking. Like five years from now, do you think Babar will be that player like Kohli well, that, is? Yeah, no, this is a good question. And I think Babar Azam is a wonderful player. I was really disappointed he got injured out here in New Zealand. And yeah, I would have loved to see him as well, yeah. Yeah, he would have liked batting a little bit. Yeah, but he has the ability to be those, those players. But what he does need is support around him. He can't do it all by himself. And it's good seeing Fawad Alam get runs um, again because he's a good player. But Babar Azam, he needs partnerships so he can produce himself, right? So Kane Williamson's got a yeah, good... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Steve Smith's got a good top order around him, like Warren and Le- uh, Levashane. So he can't do it all... Uh, Arm, and I hope the Pakistan public and media don't put too much pressure and expectation on him as well because he's carrying that as a bit. So his teammates in top order need to support him as well because he can't do it all by himself. If he gets that support, his stats will be amazing in four or five years' time. So that's a really good question. Um, and thanks for joining in. And I'll see you again next time we do this, eh? So that's us guys this is going to do 30 minutes um could have gone on for a lot longer i think but uh but big big thank you for for, for joining in this is the first time I, i've tried this and I, i've really enjoyed it so uh tune in next time we do this uh tell your friends to to subscribe to the channel because the more followers we get the more subscribers we get and the more views we get it, it helps all of us and i don't consider this to be to be my channel i, I consider it to be your channel so uh yeah, so th- thanks for joining in uh, this evening from wherever you've been in the world, and we'll do this sometime again soon. So good night from me.